What is up, everybody, and welcome into the DNVR Nuggets pregame show presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, the top rated sportsbook app. Game number five. Pivotal. You could say pivotal game five. Pivotal uh, to all of these games. All of these games are, in, in fact, pivotal. Every single one of them. Matters. Every single one. This one especially so, and I'm going to tell you guys right now, nervous energy about. About. <laughs> about. Dude, I'm, I'm nervous. nervous. I think it's Eric's, it's Eric's flannel that has me all. Yeah, I'm, I'm going full Canadian today. This is not a Canadian flannel, but you know what? We welcome you. Those, those people watching, if you were just to guess the weather or what season we are in based solely on the people on this couch, what would you guess? Peak, middle of winter? Did you yeah, maybe probably. January, you know, you maybe early February? Early, late spring, early summer day that's a little <laughs> chilly. <laughs> Dude, like, what do you want from yeah, us? Yeah, it was, it was rainy skies today. It feels it's great. It was rainy skies. Every Did single not one rain, of us was wearing was long skies. sleeves, except for you were stubborn about it and somehow now prideful about your... Uh, Wearing a T-shirt. Congratulations. A little weather cornered <laughs> open. A little weather, <laughs> little weather corner. <laughs> um, the Nuggets are home for game five here, looking to bounce back after game four. And I'm telling you guys, this game, it's going to be intense. It's going to be contentious. It's going to be physical. <laughs> there are so many, so many storylines. I'm genuinely excited for this game and nervous at the exact same time. What are you watching over there? Is it the show? God, no. <laughs> are you kidding? Anything but... <laughs> Uh, the mean of this show is going to be a little bit different. We're going to have Serbian corner for the majority of it. I did a pre-recorded interview with Miroslav, the homie Miroslav, who, by the way, is asleep right now. He wanted to pre-record it because he wanted to get that extra thirty minutes of sleep. Um, but it was really good talking about the Serbian documentary, talking about his expectations for Jokic, and even the Jokic Nurkic battle. Some of the dynamics there. I thought it was really interesting. But first, before we get there. Let's talk about game notes. Vote. You were on the call today. What did Mike Malone have to say in the pregame? Sure. Let me start with injury report real quick uh, because some of you might be wondering about Austin Rivers after those nasty spills. Not on the injury report. He's fine. No changes. Uh, Michael Malone, who sounded quite tired today, talked about was asked about finding a match- matchup for Aaron Gordon and if it's difficult in this series. Quote, no, I wouldn't say it's difficult. We try to change up as much as possible, not just in coverages, but in matchups. Each game will be a feel. Uh, he talked about first quarters being a key in this series. Obviously, they were te- they were off to a terrible start in Portland. Um, they're shooting 48.5% from three in their two wins. In their two losses, they're shooting 30%. 28 free throws in the two wins, 15 in the losses. So those were examples he gave about being active or not active enough. And finally, on Nurkic, obviously he slid into the starting lineup, but as far as how they used him, Malone said, quote, they didn't do anything different. We just did a shitty job, end quote. <laughs> And then he ended it by talking about Norm Powell as probably the swing MVP when you're looking at swing guys so far. The swing MVP. That's right. Okay. That's it. Done. For one game? Well, no, I think for the series. He's probably talking about, like, in the series, like, him succeeding means Portland succeeds, him failing, Portland fails. I see. So should Norman Powell perform like Norman Powell did the last game, but not any of the other games, he will be the swing MVP. Now you're confusing me. Yeah, I'm, I think he was I'm just. Now, trying, I thought he, I understood it. He was just talking about his game five performance. <laughs> yeah, well, he was good. Something he was, they're, they're game four, but something they're worried about in game five. I put. I wrote about today on the list. I feel like all the chips are on the table right yes, now. Like I every team so. kind of know. I, I don't know. That there's like a crazy adjustment uh, card up your sleeve. I think everybody knows now. It's like who's going to make shots? Who's going to execute? Yep. Who's going to be first to all the 50-50 balls? And I'm and just who brings more energy? And I would be shocked. I think both teams are bringing the energy tonight. I think tonight is a real Godzilla versus King Kong. It. Battle. It's not like I, I haven't seen the movie, but I assume that's two <laughs> monsters, two beasts, you know, full on battle. That's right. I, I'm having the hardest time believing you haven't seen that movie. I haven't seen it. Isn't it's, that crazy? I have not having, seen it. It's having, I'm having a very I hard do time. know it's two beasts that, that fight, though. <laughs> I actually believe it. I believe it. I believe that you didn't see it. Um, we got to speed along. Is there any other notes? That's it, baby. All right. So we're going to speed along because we had an interview. If you don't know, there is a new documentary that is being produced. It's kind of like uh, the Michael Jordan documentary, but of Jokic. But better. But but of Jokic, (laughs) so of a slightly better player. And it's airing in (laughs) Serbia right now. I believe it was produced by Mishko. Uh, Remember Jokic's manager uh, and and the mega basket um, head honcho. So there's a, a, a documentary going out, and we've seen little clips, but I wanted to ask Miroslav about some of the backstory to it, how it's received in Serbia, and some other things going on. So sit tight, check it out. Really great interview with Miroslav. See you guys in a while. <laughs> All right, now we're going to welcome in the homie Miroslav, our Serbian correspondent, and my co-star on the RTS Serbian Television Today Show. Uh, <laughs> Miroslav, it's so good to see you, buddy. Good morning, Adam. Good morning. 
Oh, good evening. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know if it's good morning. I don't know if that's appropriate. Um, <laughs> but I know it's, it's funny. We're recording this in the daytime so you can get an extra half hour of sleep because you're a diehard, true diehard. What time are you waking up to watch the game today? Three o'clock. Woo! <laughs> and then do you have work tomorrow? I mean, is this you're up and then you just go into your day? Oh, yeah, it will be a bit tough. I have a pretty busy business day tomorrow, but uh, hopefully from 5.30 I can get some sleep to 7 o'clock and that, that should be fine. I, is... I, I will sleep in, in two parts. <laughs> there you go. This is why you're the uh, you know our Serbian correspondent and the MVP of the show. But um, I want to ask you, we want to have you on for a couple different reasons. One, Jokic had his first bad game in, in a million years, so I wanted to talk about that. But before we get to it, I want to ask you, there was a big um, documentary I know that's going on. First of all, who's behind this documentary on Nikola Jokic and where is it being broadcast? It is being broadcast on the same television station where you are already a star now on the RTS, the national TV station in Serbia. And uh, it is actually a five part documentary series. We already seen two parts of it. First one was uh, about uh, Mishko. And the second yeah. part was about Nicola. I have no idea what are the rest of those will be, but uh, I have a feeling they're all connected somehow to Mishko because I believe he is somehow behind the whole project. Uh, it's a, it's a really uh, impressive piece of uh, documentary work and uh, some really really cool storylines for us diehards on both sides of the pond. Yeah, so my first question is just how popular is Mishko? Because I know, like, I know of him, and I know, like, the real diehard Nuggets fans, but is he popular in Serbia for all of his involvement with basketball? That's an interesting uh, interesting question because uh, Mishko was actually for years uh, not a very liked person in Serbia because uh, many, many mostly casual fans always thought that he's the guy that prevents his players from playing for the national team and that's a really really big big stuff in serbia because you know uh national team in most of the world countries outside of us and i guess canada are a really big deal for for basketball diehards and when there is a player that doesn't play for this or that reason they usually everybody usually blames the manager because they think ah the manager wants his money and he doesn't want him to get injured or something like that so they usually blame the managers and uh, to tell you the truth what i've seen about mishko and what he has been doing with his uh, his guys he was actually never a guy that was opposed to players playing for the national team. It's interesting because this was a story with Jokic a couple of years back when he did not play, right? I remember a lot of people saying, it's Mishko, it's Mishko, it's his fault. So this is why it's even recently people have had this sort of conspiracy theory. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, back in, back in uh, 2017, there was a European championship when uh, Nikola didn't play and that was actually... Uh, let me think, that was his uh, uh, fourth year. That was his contract year. He was really trying to, to concentrate on his contract year to, to play uh, his best. And, uh, uh, and he actually, you know, earned the max, max contract after that. And he really established him as a biggest star in, in Denver Nuggets history, probably. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and the reason why people got mad about it, it it's because many of the guys were injured back then and uh, uh, the national team really could have could uh, use Nikola as their best player and to to actually walk to the gold medal because uh, we we've been stopped in the in the gold medal game against Slovenia against Luka Doncic and Goran Dragic because Serbia yeah. had like 11, 11 players not playing yeah what a drag uh, well tell me level. about this this documentary so far what has stood out to you yeah, well, the first episode was mostly about Mishko and uh, his starts with with lower leagues and how he he moved forward. Of course, there are some references to 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 Nicola's um, uh, bringing up as well. But this second uh, second uh, episode was really a banger because it it has a really a lot of uh, uh, cool storylines for for all of us. I would start with him. Uh, uh, moving from Vojvodina to Mega and then from Mega to Denver. 
you know the story how Mishko was reading the newspaper and saw Nikola's numbers from a really uh, low league and uh, he says that because he saw that he immediately contacted his guys near near Novi Sad and that's how he signed him because if he didn't do it that weekend next weekend partisan on red star would would catch catch him and his development would be completely different mishko thinks that he would go you know from vojvodina to partisan from partisan to panathinaikos or from red star to olympiakos or something like that and he would stay in europe for like next five years mm. and what a waste for his talent that would be this is what he claims he actually claims that nikola would not be in nba today if that happened no he might be he might be right you know he, he would probably go to the nba after the gold medal on the olympics but uh, <laughs> <laughs> well it's but funny you know before that there is something to it i think about you know Jokic's talent is such that even if he broke out and was an mvp and and all of these different things at different leagues and whatever i think there would have been the same doubts maybe on a smaller scale but the same doubts of yeah but he's not that athletic and how is he going to handle the pick and roll and can he do this and that like even if he was doing the exact same thing he's doing in the NBA right now in Europe, I think those things would have lingered. He's that unconventional. Yeah, Mishko knew that that the only thing that separates Nikola from greatness was his body. Actually, Nikola's first training in Vojvodina, he got injured. His first training in Mega, he got injured. His mm -hmm. first training with the national team, he got injured. Even in Denver, he got injured on his first training. This, these are Nikola's words from the documentary. I'm not reading the tea leaves. And hmm. uh, and uh, Mishko knew that that they need to work on his body, and he wanted him to go to Barcelona. That was there was this famous game in December 2014 when ba Barcelona guys came to watch him live. They were already uh, with a prepared uh, contract to to sign him for the next season for Barcelona. He would actually not play for Barcelona. He would go to another team, you know, as a as a how do you say the player that that is owned by Barcelona but plays for somebody else? Yeah, before doesn't happen in the US, but I get it. Yeah, 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 I know. So that would be really, really a rough road for him. And uh, that famous game where Nicola played really bad, something like the Memphis game when he wouldn't shoot at all right. and misses the rotations and misses the passes, something like that. And interesting thing about it is. Dan Milovic said about that that game that uh, it happened right after Nikola's girlfriend Natalia, his wife today, left for the States to become a student at the university. And Nikola was really, really sad about it. And he was almost ready to quit basketball completely. And this is the reason why he actually had that bad game. Now, Barcelona guys didn't want to, to give up on him. They wanted to sign him anyway because they knew how good he was. They've been scouting him for a long time. And Mishko said, listen, guys, it's only December. We have the time until June. Let's wait. Let's let's get some really great games. And then you can, you know, uh, sign him on, on good terms. Yeah. And then and then history uh, happened. Arturas Karnišovas called Mishko and he said, I want your guy in my team in, in June. And Mishko said, no way. It's too it's too early for him. No way he can play on the NBA level already and Arturas asked him okay so what's what's the problem why he cannot play and he said his body is not ready and Arturas said well do you think Barcelona guys will make his body better faster than our guys in Denver with all the facilities and all the training staff we have uh, so Mishko insisted on a three-year contract because he was still believing that Nicola might fail after one year mm. and return to Europe. So he wanted to, to give him more, uh, how to say, to give him more money, you know, three years value right. of money in case he needs to go back and start over. So this is the reason uh, Mishko said yes. And as we know, it was a good, it was a good decision. Does, does Mishko sort of in the, in the video at all, does he, demonstrate any sort of appreciation for the Denver Nuggets organization or you know because it sounds like he was skeptical of them at first but does it feel like oh man it was the perfect place for him to have gone well I didn't hear a lot of comments from Mishko about Denver but I did hear a lot of comments from Nikola Jokic about Denver because as you all seen a couple of days ago the the quote from the documentary yeah. is 
that he hopes that he he will be able to play his whole whole career in Denver. But there is a, actually a better quote in in, in this documentary oh. when he said that he is really happy because in Denver he found home. Oh my! He goodness. literally said he literally mm. said that uh, Denver feels like home to him. And let mm. me give you a couple of most a couple more things in this direction. Okay. Dan said that Nicola promised him he will end his career in Mega. His last season would be in Mega. And Nicola said, oh, man, I don't know if I, I will be able to do that. So this is one, one thing you might think, yeah, it's a hassle to go back to Europe and then come back to Denver, so maybe. And another thing, three years ago, when uh, Serbian journalist Igor Miklja asked Nicola, uh, would he... Uh, think uh, about living in the States after he, he gets retired, he said, no, no, my plan is to go back to Sombor. But you know what? I have an uncle who lives in Austria for 30 years. And every year he says he's going back to Sombor, but he never did. Oh. So who knows? That was three years ago. Yeah. That was three years ago. I will say. So we'll see. Yeah, I will say it almost would feel weird for me if he, as much as I would love Jokic to stay in Denver for 50 years and we all get to go have pizza together and everything else. Like, he's talked so much about Sambor and I love that he, it is still home for him. So I like that there's two homes. You know, maybe I asked him this That's question right. maybe four years ago about if Denver was feeling like home and he told me he has just one home and it's Sambor. So it sounds like maybe he's changed his tune a little bit, spending more and more time here, starting, you know, a family now with his wife here. So. Uh, maybe there's more to it. Um, is there anything else you want to share from this documentary? That And how well, is it received by Serbians? You know, it's really hard for me to say that because I don't watch TV at all. Mm. I, I I was actually informed like, like 12 hours later that the documentary was on TV. So, I, of course, I had to, to watch it. But um, I, I don't I don't know how how well. I mean, Nikola is a, is a huge star. You can you could expect that many people want to watch it. Problem is, you know, the time of the of the show. I think it was like 10 p.m. Hmm. on on Monday, so not a perfect not a perfect time slot. And also, you know, it's it's still a documentary. It's not uh, it's not really a well. exciting thing for masses. It's more for diehards. Yeah, but, the Michael uh, Jordan that, documentary it, did well. Yeah, and nothing was happening back then, right? That's true. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> if I may say something, you know, Michael Jordan doc documentary was starring Michael Jordan and produced by Michael Jordan, yeah. and it and it's sim similar with Mishko here. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's the hero and the star. Um, let both, me both of them are really good. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you about this last game four because Jokic looked really fatigued to me. Did he look so to you as well? And just kind of how do you evaluate him specifically? What do you expect of him in game five? Oh, I expect a monster game. No, no question about it. It will be a monster game. And what happened in game four, it's really, it's really hard to, to explain it. I, I just cannot believe that he would be so tired physically after 36 hours i tend to believe that uh, that crazy theory about you know uh, loud protesters protesting all night and keeping players awake that could be that mm. could be really really what happened because they actually all looked sleepy but just in case that wasn't wasn't the case i would i would say that was some kind of minor emotional slump or something like that from nicola because he wasn't trying to to uh, to help himself get into the game stronger. You know, he was settling for hard, contested, uh, long twos from from the get go instead of you know trying to get around uh, uh, Nurkic or something like that. He was just settling for jumpers, jumpers as as uh, as Scott Hastings likes to say. Yeah, that, yeah, it was an interesting one. One of the things, you know, game four, Nurkic, it was the first time I've seen Nurkic sort of dominate that matchup for three years or so. Nurkic had a quick, once he went to Portland, there was one or two games where he really looked good. But ever since then, I felt like Jokic has really been comfortable. That one he took over, I, I kind of want to revisit some of the stuff we talked about. How much, how important do you think that matchup is to Jokic, you know, 
one because it is an ex-teammate. You know, there's some there's there's always that there. Of Denver chose Jokic over Nurkic. So how much how important do you feel that matchup is to him? And then also just in generally speaking, you know, the battle between the Serbian and a Bosnian, Jokic, Nurkic, former teammates, two teams in the same division. Like, do you feel when you're watching Jokic that that rivalry means something to him? Well, the thing that it means to him is he has a lot of respect for for Yusuf. And he has a lot of respect for all the players from former Yugoslavia. He actually said this on the documentary. And remember, the documentary was filmed like in, in November last year. So it's not uh, right. recency bias. He said that all the players from former Yugoslavia and the NBA have one, one thing in common. And that's the fact that all of them play the right way. They know how to play the right way. They know everything about basketball there is there is to know. Of course, there are some limitations, physical limitations or whatever, or shooting limitations. But uh, he really respects all of them. And I think, uh, actually, Yusuf is a friend of him. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think they speak every day, but uh, when they when they greet, they're, they're very friendly to, to one another. So there is no... And I, I'm... 100% sure of this there is no rivalry you know Serbia versus Bosnia in Nikola's eyes yeah. I'm sure of that for Yusuf I I also think that there is not a lot of that from his side there might be some you know outside uh, influences around him that that maybe made him do some silly things in the past but not nothing recent really there were some some details in 2019 playoffs but not since then so uh i don't know it, it's it, it's strange nikola just had a really really bad game for his standards i mean if you look at his numbers that's that's a good game for for most nba players yeah he, he shot like 40 percent from the field but that's that's a normal game for like 80 yeah. percent of the league so yeah that's that was a really bad game for his standards but uh I don't think I don't think that Yusuf did uh, something extremely important for Nikola to have such a game. Okay. Um, before you get out of here, quick prediction for Game Five. You're gonna hate me. I think we're losing Game Five and winning in seven. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what a prediction. All right. The homie Miroslav with a <laughs> negative but also kind of positive prediction. So we'll, we'll, t- we'll take it. Thanks so much, Miroslav. Big shouts to the homie Miroslav. Always bringing it, man. What a Always prediction. Bringing it to me. What a prediction. What a weird prediction. First Wait, of all, the least likely outcome, I feel. I didn't expect that at all. I didn't even that. hear what he said. What he said he the Nuggets will lose game five but win six and seven. Oh. I forgot we were on the show for a while. Me too. I we were kind of just talking amongst away. ourselves. It was uh, a lot of great detail, though, honestly, from Miroslav. There was no way for us to sort of get that. Like, we're waiting on a translation for the show. I can't wait for it to come out. Hopefully, we get a translation. But there was no way. I know it's been the talk of the town, and I just kind of wanted to get all the little details from him. So big shouts to Miroslav, who's not watching. He's sleeping right now, so he'll wake up. Miroslav. His, his alarm goes off in seven minutes. We think you're great. We do think you're great. <laughs> um, it is time now, though. To head to the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's oh, top-rated boy. sportsbook app, and to win some money while we win the game tonight. Dev, you're back. I know we missed you last time. We, we got <laughs> murdered. We got murdered. I love We this. got murdered and mundered. We did get mundered and murdered. Yeah, you're here to, to save us. It's time to show some respect. First off, the line is at two. Yeah. Are we liking that at two? Nuggets are two-point favorites. Are we liking that? I mean, when you say we, are you asking me specifically? Yes. Eric I has a lot of confidence. I love it. Dude, I have I have filled to the brim with confidence. <laughs> I don't know why everybody is so trepidatious. Like, I've just seen I, – I, I, I just, I don't know. We'll talk again at the end of the, uh, at the end of the game, and I'll either be beaming or not here. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope you're beaming. I don't, so, I, you have so much permission to talk so much shit to everybody else. I, dude, I, I don't know. I, I literally, I, if you started watching the series last game and last game only, I would be yeah. like, oh my god. But like, 
I watched the whole series, and I watched the season. And See, I that's my problem. Before. I only watched the last game. <laughs> <laughs> Same, all of us. I, I know what you like, mean. I don't know why, but I don't know why, why it was acting. I, I wanted to be clear. I'm not predicting a Nuggets yeah. loss. I'm just saying your supreme confidence trumps my, like, they could do this. It's going to have to dig deep. You are right, though, Eric. We've seen, like, one team look great, the other team look great, one team look bad, yeah, the other yeah, team yeah, look yeah. bad. The, little... Things could not have been darker after game one. Yeah. Game two, game three, we were brinking on Smug Life. Do you like the minus two, then? I do, but I actually like the money line. Well, the I like I, I ended up taking the money line because yeah. the odds were a little bit better for the the um, the spread. But RK said like, "What if we get a Jokic game winner?" And I thought like, "What if Jokic hits a game winner? And we end up winning by one, and I and lose. you lose money, and you're so just then pissed? I just took the money line. All right, <laughs> you're still so happy regardless. But sp- since we're That's on true. Jokic, my money's nothing I, to me. I believe that this is a, a huge bounce back game for him. I think that this is a. A game that he just comes out and he just truly dominates in every facet of it. So, 31 and a half is the line. I think he's going to go over that. I really right. do think that he's going to have a monster game and in, in everything. So, you might as well take the points, rebounds, and assists. And also, what Eric likes to do is he likes to take the points and the win. There's player parlays. Mm-hmm. Player parlays. So Jokic, what are you taking? Points Jok- and win? I took the Jokic double-double and win at like plus 200 something. And I also took Jokic plus 32 and a win. And that's also like in the 200 range. All right. I like it. I'm with you. I'm going. I'm hopping on both of those with you. Another person that is forced, literally forced to show up tonight <laughs> is Michael Porter Jr. <laughs> Dude, they did us a solid, he better show up. They did us a solid. They put his numbers down to like entice you to go one way or the other. Which okay. Is excellent. Yeah, it what is, are we betting so on, smart. by the way, with Michael Porter? Man? It's 20 and a half on his points. Yo, he hasn't hit I that this like series. He, he yeah, hasn't he has did one. it at all. Oh, watch, 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 watch. Game one. 22, right? Game one? 25. Like 25. So I think that this is a game that they're going to make sure that they force feed him early. So I think that he's going to get off to a very, very hot start. Do you feel like this will be a pretty defining game for Michael Porter, at least for a year? Like, I, I, I feel like this game will follow him, you know? I mean, depending on how Denver advances or not advances, but, you know, like, all eyes are on him. I mean, this is a step up, put up or shut up. Is that it? Put up or put shut up. up or step up, up or step up. down. <laughs> put up or no, shut up. No Three strikes and you're out. Stop when you're ahead. You had All it right. right. Do I have it right? Time. Okay. <laughs> this is what it is, though, for him. This is, I feel like, a big game. And they have it only at 20 and a half. That's a lot. I'm going to take it. All right. Let's take the it re- together. I really do think that they're going to make sure that they get them some very easy ones, some isolation baskets to get them going early because that's the only way that they know that they can ride it. Jokic is going to show up. Jokic is going to have a good game. They need someone else, and their someone else is Michael Porter Jr. So 20 and a half points, let's lock it in. Yeah, ooh, man, ooh, I don't – you know, the lock, though, if you like his points, two and a half threes, and it's at good value. It's at good value. That's Minus 113. One. He's not getting to 20 points without three-pointers man. made. That's what he shoots. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not on any Michael Porter Jr. bets. Tonight. Really? I'm not a single one. You're so confident, just not in Michael Porter. I watched the Nuggets uh, – like meticulously outplay the Portland Trailblazers two games in a row without Michael Porter Jr. being much of a factor at all. He's not required for them to succeed. Jokic is required for them to succeed. Well, you know what? I'm still putting a unit on it. I put two, Look, and then I, I, I backed you, out because you talked me out of it. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, right. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's not like, it's not a requisite. The Michael, I mean, that I think true. we all hope that it happens, but yeah. you know, another fun one, and it just kind of actually just goes on how how you're feeling is. Austin Rivers at 15 and a half points, rebounds, and assist. Yo. Assist. He was on pace to get that like easily last game, and he goes down with the injury. He's yep. not on the injury report now. He's also in the starting lineup, so he's going to be like deemed to play. They need him to score. They're going to do everything to give. They're going to continue giving Michael Porter Jr. different looks. They're going to do everything they can to try to stop Jokic. There has to be somebody else that steps yep. up. It's going to have to be Austin Rivers. Yep. 15 and a half for points, rebounds, and assists. I'm just, I'm just on his point. It's just only nine and a half. He has to score 10 points to hit his over. You know what I like? I get the free bet. Michael Porter, first player to score, plus 750. Dude, no, use your free bet for some crazy parlay. That's plus 750. Okay. <laughs> I'll win thirty-seven dollars. But then add some other crazy parlay on top of it. You can do pa- that with another game or uh, something. All right, I'm gonna add that <laughs> with. I'll find something over here. Yeah, I can lose money here. Can I take the Nets to win? And yes, take exactly. Yes, take all right. the Nets to win. Yeah, like just get. If it's if you're making it sweet, make it real sweet. <laughs> all right, I'm making it real sweet. I got a five dollar free bet. I'm putting it on. Let's win some money. All right, guys. We're going to have fun. There's still room at the DNVR bar. We actually did not fill up today like we have for the previous game. So I don't know what that means. I guess it's on television here locally. 
We are stocked up on some Rakia. Kale, do you have the Rakia? You can pull up real quickly here. Um, you can see we got stocked up. Oh, Brand new Rakia. Somebody said this isn't the good stuff. Guys, it's Colorado. <laughs> it's the only stuff they sell. Like, we're not exactly being selective here on which Rakia we, we choose. Yeah, we're not lined in on the Rakia connection. Yeah, we, we need a better Rakia connection. But thanks for tuning in. Hit the like button on the way out, guys, and be right back here at the post-game show. We'll see you all Let's in. go. Enjoy the game if you can somehow.